Gurvei Tora Chandrai Radhikai Tadai Shaya Krishna Bhaktai Tad Bhaktai Namon Anandali Lamaya Vigrahai Thema Badivas Chavi Sundarai Tas my maha prema rasa pradai Chaitanya chandraya namunas Chaitanya chandraya namunas Chaitanya chandraya namunas Mbhatya vina aparana lakshay Siddhika skamamani karvan kamadhi Kripa Maitam Sharanam Prapanya Vrinde Namaste Charanana Vindam Vrinde Namaste Charanana Vindam Govinda Dhamo Dharamara Vekhi Govinda Dhamo Smaraha Sumuli Manaya Radhika Riska Mama Kripa Nidhe Supriya Chana King Kulim Kuru Tavai Rasmi Tavai Rasmi Najivami Tayavana Tirikaya Devi Tam Nama Chana I have my Sasan Bhattavak Puspanji, my heart like flowers thousands and thousands of times, at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadeya Parmaradatam Guru Pada Padma, Anitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnupad, Ashtotara Satashi, Rupa Nuga Chari Varya, Sriya Bhakti Avedanta Narayan Goswami. Jai, Shubhra Secondly, I have my pranam thousands of times at the lotus seat of my Harun Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. And finally, <laughs> so finally, after I pronounce to all my dear brothers and sisters, all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, one check out. <laughs> we are so fortunate to be in the shelter of. Sri Guru and Shuddha Vaishnavas <coughs> and to be engaged in the service of their lotus feet. And especially all of our various devotional activities that we perform, they have a purpose. What is that? Sushusro Sadadanasya Vasudeva Kataruchi Samayat Sevya Vipra Punyatitha Nisheva Sutta Goswami Pad said. And that when one goes to a holy place, what is the success of visiting that holy place? Mm-hmm. When our Sri Sachinandan Gohari went to Gaya, mm-hmm. there 
he met with his guru Pada Padma, Sri Ishwar Puri, and he said, now my mm, Tirtha Yatra, my visit to the holy place is successful, and he became successful the very moment I saw your lotus feet. So the purpose of visiting any holy place is to associate with Vaishnavas and associating with them we try to render some service Ankul Seva what they need the Dati Prati Grinati Guya Makit Kriptiti Bhumte Bhuta Yate Chaiva Siddhara Priti Lakshanam Nupadesha Amrita Siddha Rupa Goswami Pari said there are six exchanges of love between Vaishnavas that means when we meet Vaishnava we should try to the Dati Prati Grinati give some gift to them and they may in return give us something that they have used some prasadi some prasadi item and that we can cherish that transcendental object that was given with them the dark prati granati chiti we can open our hearts in confidence and hear some confidential instruction we can prepare some prasadam and offer to the Vaishnavas after they have taken we can take their remnant so by these six exchanges of love, what happens? Bhakti Shakti, transcendental Swarup Shakti, Krishna's internal potency from the heart of that Vaishnava becomes transferred to us. And as that Shakti is coming, then it purifies our hearts and awakens Vasudeva Kata Ruchi, taste in Harikata. This is the main thing. Hmm? saying, whatever dharma you are doing, religious activities, if the result of that activity does not lead to the Visvaksena Kata, the attachment for hearing the pastimes of Krishna, then everything that you did even your so-called sadhana, everything. Then srama eva hi kevalam. Sram means waste of time, only hard labor. Eva, certainly it was only hard labor for nothing. He, definitely, kevalam, and only, exclusively. Exclusively, only, and certainly. Just loss of time. So this is it. The most important thing in our spiritual life that by serving Vaishnavas we develop some Vasudeva Kata Ruchi taste in hearing his beautiful pastimes. By hearing those pastimes, then the effect is amazing. So wonderful. Sutra Goswami Pad said, Tadeva Ramyam Suchiram Navam Navam. Tadeva Sasvan Manaso Mahotsavam Tadeva Shokana Vashoshanam Rinam Yaguttava Shloka Yashonu Giyate The continuous chanting of the glories of Uttama Shloka, Sri Krishna. What is that Tadeva Ramyam? Ramyam. This guitar is very charming. Tadeva Ramyam Ruchiram and very relishable. And Navam, Navam, newer and newer. The Qatar is unlimited. You can go on glorifying Krishna forever and never repeat the glory. But if you repeat the same glory, but still Navam, Navam, newer and newer at every moment. Tadeva Ram Yam Ruchiram Navam, Navam, Tadeva Shashvan Manaso Mahotsavam. This Harikatha is Shaswan Manasa Mahutsav, a great festival for your heart. When you hear this Harikatha, then your heart begins to uh, jubilate, celebrate, hmm? and becomes full of enthusiasm for Seva. Huh? Mahautsava. Hmm? Because one feels such great ananda. And that enthusiasm is Tadeva Shaswan. Shashwat means continuous, forever, never ending. Because this is not a material enthusiasm. 
This is the Hadini Shakti, the pleasure potency of Krishna, which is transferred to us by the Shravanam, the hearing process. So try to hear very deeply. And if one will take pleasure in serving the pastimes of Krishna with your ears, hearing is a seva, it's joyful. It gives great pleasure, but we're not hearing to get pleasure. We're hearing to serve Krishna with our ears. And then what will happen? Tadeva Shokarnava Shoshana Marinam. Even though this world is a Shoka Arnava, that means an ocean of lamentation. Hmm? I'm going here and there meeting many adults complaining. This is so bad. Hmm? My husband is bad. My wife is bad. My children are bad. My job is bad. My boss is bad. Hmm? Everything is not good. Lamentation is going on in this world. Hmm? It's like an ocean of lamentation everywhere you go. But this Qatar is so powerful. Tariva Shokanava Shoshana Marinam. In a second. Hmm? This Harikata can dry up the vast ocean of misery. Just like Agastya Rishi. Hmm? In the palm of his hand, like taking Achaman. He dried up, dried up the whole ocean, the seven seas. So in the same way, Harikata has inconceivable Achimta Shakti to completely dry up the ocean of lamentation. So one's heart becomes the exclusively joyful. Because Tadeva Shokana Shoshamrinam Yaduttama Shloka Yashonu Giyate This is the glory of Uttama Shloka. Uttama Shloka. Uttama Shloka means mm, Shloka means the glorification that person who is glorified by Uttama mm, the topmost Uttam Bhagavata those Paramahamsas, liberated souls they never glorify material things they have no interest in any worldly things but they are constantly glorifying Krishna so because he is glorified by Uttam Mahabhagavats, therefore his name is called Uttama Shloka. And his name is called Uttama Shloka because Ut, Tama. Ut means above and Tama means darkness. This material world is only darkness of ignorance. All the elements, you can say, I am not in darkness, I can see everything. But all these gross elements that we are seeing, according to Sankhya Darshan, they are the transformation of Ahankar in Tamagun. Hmm? The element of ego in Tamagun transforms and becomes sound, touch, uh, the form, taste and smell. And they, those Tanmatra sense objects become the gross elements. So this world is all Tamasic ignorance. Hmm? And ignorance means samsaric asakti. Attachment to temporary things. Hmm? We are Atma. We are eternal beings. Being transcendental and spiritual and eternal beings, we have no relationship at all with any temporary thing. Nothing. Then why does our mind dwell on these things? This is Tama. Darkness, samsaric asakti, attachment to the temporary world. So those persons who Uttama, their minds never dwell on worldly things. Their minds are always Manamana Samadukanam Arpaya Nija Pada Pankajamakarande Like bumblebees tasting the nectar of Sri Krishna's lotus feet, they Uttama, they glorify Krishna. So his name is Uttama Shloka. And he Uttama Shloka because Krishna himself is Uttam, his supreme truth. Vadanti Tattatva Rastatva Yadgyanma Tayam Pramaiti Paramatmaiti Bhagavaniti Shaktiti. Sukta Goswami is saying, he's not saying, I know the truth. He's saying, those persons who know the truth, they say that that truth is one. Advaya Gyan Paritattva. Not one non dual reality. And he's realized in three stages Brahman, light of Brahman, Paramatma, the super soul, Vishnu, who is doing the Shristi Lila, the pastime of creating the material world. And 
ultimately he is for those whose vision is deeper whose realization is deeper more profound Bhagavan Krishna is Bhagavan many people use this word God and they think oh I can think about God but Sudhi Goswami is saying Vadanti tat tatva visas tatvam yas jnana matvayam the knowledge of Bhagavan, the knowledge of God is Atvaya Gyan. It is beyond duality. As long as our mind is dwelling in duality of I and mine, Aham Vameti, I and mine, you and yours, happiness and distress, victory and defeat, profit and loss, heat and cold, and honor and dishonor, all of these things, then we don't have Atvaya Gyan, we have dual knowledge so those whose consciousness is living in the plane of duality they cannot have advaya knowledge of the non-dual reality Krishna so this word Bhagavan God is not such an easy thing to understand that's why I see Krishna again and again in Bhagavad Gita he says Sitoshna Sukudukada comes Tikshastabharata Yamhi na vyatyanti yate purusham purusha sava samadhu kam sukam dhiram samrita tvayaka upate Hey Arjun, that person who mm, is steady in happiness and distress, never affected by these things, he becomes eligible for amrita to realize immortality. Mm? Not the person whose mind is swinging like a pen pendulum. One day, ha ha ha, ha 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 laughing, crying, like this completely unstable mind. Do you understand God? Can't even have any idea what is God. So Krishna in Bhagavad Gita is telling this. Yam hina vyatyantitei kursham purushashava samadhuka sukham dhiram be dhir very sober, very tolerant, very patient, be equipoised in equanimity in the face of the dualities of this world and go on performing your devotional service to Gurudev gradually, gradually the mind will become as hmm? Krishna said yesham to antakatam papam janaram punyakamanam te dvangva moha nemukta bhajanti mam vidabrata when a person his mind is hmm, dvangva moha Vimukta, free from dualities, that's the sign that that person is no longer under the control of karma. They are free from path. They have acted piously in this life and in previous lives. And now their mind is free from duality, then bhajanti maam vridabrata, then that person can do bhajan, dridabrata, with firm determination. Others cannot. They can chant for five minutes and then throw away their mala and do material things. Those who are free from duality, they can do bhajan. They can understand, realize, Bhagavan. Who is Bhagavan? Aiswaryasya, Smakrasya, Viryasya, Yasasasya, Gyanaraya, Gashtaiva, Sanubhaga, Mithindana. Who is complete in all the divine virtues? Aiswarya. That means he has all astasitik, mystic powers. He's the biggest of the biggest, the smallest of the smallest, the heaviest of the heaviest. All mystic powers are present in him. So Bhavik, naturally, he didn't do tapasya for that. Like a yogi can get some siddhi by doing tapasya. But see Krishna, all mystic power is present in him, naturally, effortlessly. As far as Shasamagarsha, Viryasya, Virya means he is Sarva Shakti man. He has all Shakti. That means he has Maya Shakti, material energy. Antaranga Shakti, the spiritual energy. And Tatasta Shakti, us, the Jeevas. He has Icha Shakti, desire, and all his desires become true automatically. He has Sandini, Sangeta, Nadini. His pleasure potency and consciousness potency. He has all Shaktis, like Radhika. This is Purna Shakti, Lalita, Vishaka, Chitta, all gopis, there is Shakti, Sava Shakti. So, Samakrasya, Viryasya, Yash. Hmm? Here this verse is describing Tarutama Shloka Yashonu Giyate. 
Krishna has all fame. Bhagavan has all fame. Many people in this world also get fame, famous for five minutes now on YouTube. <laughs> but Yash means Kalyan, Mangalmai, auspicious. If you listen to the fame of an ordinary person of this world, your mind becomes contaminated. But the fame of Krishna is such, if just the air eh, that touched the Harikata describing Krishna's fame will touch you, then your whole life will be transformed. Krishna's fame is Mangalmoy. It makes your life perfect and auspicious. Virasarya Sasasriya, Sri Beauty. See, Krishna is the embodiment of all beauty and of all his qualities. This is his main quality. Every other quality is just a part of Krishna's quality of beauty. And that's why his name is Krishna. Krishna. Karshati. He attracts others. This general meaning of Krishna is Karshati. He attracts others. I don't like to think about that meaning. I prefer to think that Krishna means who is attracted by Radharani. That meaning is. That meaning is correct, but this meaning is more. Krishna is Krishna is attracted by the beauty of Radharani. So, and when Krishna is under the control of the love of Radharani, then he is beautiful. If he is not under the control of Radharani, if you go to Chandravi, then we cannot agree that he is beautiful. Never, never, and never. <laughs> So, Gyan Vairagya, he has knowledge and detachment from all worldly things, from his external energy. These are the qualities of, of Bhagavan. But actually, these qualities are not his best qualities. Krishna is called Uttama Shloka, means Krishna who is glorified for the best of his best qualities. And they are two. One is Prema Vasyata. That he is controlled by love. This is his most wonderful quality. Hmm? When people think of Bhagavan, they think of Ishvara. He is in control of everything and everyone. Hmm? But the greatest quality of Bhagavan, of Krishna, is his sweetness. Madhurya Bhagavatu Sa Braje Koila Parcha Tashuka Vyasera Nanda Tashuka Vyasera Nanda Stane Stane Bhagavate Vaniyachi Janaite Tashuni Mate Bhaktagan Shri Krishna Skavara is just one part said, the essence of Bhagavan is not Aishwarya Skavara, Magra Skavara, Virya Sasha. This is not the essence of Bhagavan. The essence of Bhagavan is Madhurya Bhagavata Sa, his sweetness. And that sweetness is only manifested where? In Braja. In Braja Mandal. How do we know? Tashuka Vyasarananda, the son of Vyasadeva, has described it. Shukadeva Goswami, Stani Stani Bhagate, from in place to place. Here and there in Srimad Bhagavatam, Vanyachi Janiti, he has made it known by describing the sweetness of Krishna. Tahashuni Mate Bhaktagan. And when the Bhaktas, Sutta Bhaktas, they hear about the sweetness of Krishna in Vrindavan from Shukadeva Goswami, Srimad Bhagavatam, then they become mad, they become intoxicated. So the sweetness of Krishna, his greatest quality, is especially Prema Vasita, that is controlled by the love of his devotees, and Bhakta Vatsalyata, that Krishna himself, he is full of affection for his devotees. He is living and breathing only to give happiness to Radhika and all her sakis, to Nanda and the shoulder, to the cowboys and cows. He is living for them. So these are the, this is the essence of Bhagavata. Yaduttama shloka yashonu viyate. So when one hears these beautiful qualities of Sri Krishna's sweetness, the ocean of suffering is completely evaporated. One's heart becomes engaged in an eternal festival of love, which is navam navam, newer and newer at every moment. So Swami has explained this at the very end, after 12, 12 cantos at the end, 
He's glorifying Harry Potter in this one. You know that Sri Krishna, when he was in Dwarka, the time of solar eclipse was coming. So he went to Kurukshetra. And bridge buses from Kurukshetra came and Radhika met with Krishna. But though Radha Krishna met there, Radhika said, My heart, I'm happy, but my heart is not fully satisfied. Why? Because for Rasa to manifest, then four things must be present. Radhika, Krishna. And if Radha Krishna are present, but there are no Sakis, without the Sakis, then the Rasa will not manifest. Actually. Viborapi sukha rupa, swapa kasha upi bhava, shanama pina hirada krishna yo yarite swa. Srila Krishna Saras Goswami Pad said, Though Radha and Krishna, they're, mm, they're the embodiment of happiness, and their happiness is all pervading and self manifest, but they cannot experience even one drop of that happiness for a second without their sakis. So, Radhika should be there, Krishna should be there, the Saki should be there. But at Kurukshetra, Radha and Krishna and the Sakis were there. But they were still not satisfied. Why? No Vrindavan. So, Vrindavan should be there. Who can describe the glories of Vrindavan? Lord Brahma, he has prayed. Tad Bhuri Bhagyam, he Janma Kima Pitabhyam, he had Gokulepi Katamangrir, Jogi Shekham, he has Jeevitam. To Bhagavan, just mm-hmm. give it down to Nikola Bhagavan Mukundas, to Adyapi Yapada Raja Suti Gameva. Lord Brahma prayed. I, it would be a matter of great fortune for me if in some future life I could take birth. Well, not in Vrindavan, I'm not qualified. But perhaps on the other side of the river in Gokul, if I could take birth there as even a, a stone, a piece of stone. So at any bridge basi, when. Uh, the sweeper comes from sweeping the streets. Before she enters a home, she'll scrape her feet on a stone, clean her feet before she goes in. If I be that stone and get the dust of the feet of bridge basses on my head, I will be very lucky. Because these bridge basses are so fortunate that Kattaman Ritshekam Yats Jeevitam Tunikilam Bhagavan Mukundas that Sikushna is living in the senses of all bridge buses. Their praying is so intense. Wherever they look, they see Krishna. Whatever they hear, they feel Krishna's the presence in that sound. And whatever they touch, whatever they smell, all their senses. Krishna is living in all of their senses. And in what capacity is he living there? With folded hands. Oh my dear one, how can he do you? So how great are these bridge buses? So Lord Brahma, he said, Oh, I want to take the birth there in pressure. Even the Vedas, they cannot describe even the glories of one blade of grass in Vrindavan. But what is the highest glory of Vrindavan? In the full moon night, see Krishna, secretly leaving his house, Nandana, Nanda Bhavan, he goes out into the forest of Vrindavan and seeing the beauty of the forest of Vrindavan. Vibraja tilakam kalindataniyani loga nilambaro danshat kanchana champaka ruchiraho nana rasullasini Krishna Prema Payoda Raina Sadena Gyanta Samohini Gopendratma Javallava Vijayate Radheva Brindatavi Srila Prabhupada and the Saraswati is saying, O oh, glories to the forest of Vrindavan. Why? This Braja, this Vrindavan forest is none different from Radhika. Radhika herself said, 
Hari Rari Dayaman, Mara Mara Brindavan, Mara Mara Yek Kori Jani. Oh Krishna, my heart and Brindavan are one. So when Krishna enters into the forest of Brindavan, Bid Brajakti Laka Kalinda Tanayani Lo Bani Lambaro, and he sees, oh, the uh, yellow must the yellow sesame flowers and seeing the yellow sesame flowers Krishna has a sporty of Radhika's tilak hmm? and when he sees the flowing dark blue waves of Jamuna then he sees Radhika's blue ancha huh? Radhika's blue cloth and when he sees the golden complexion of the Champak flowers, then he sees Radhika's golden complexion. Na na rasulasini. And he becomes overwhelmed, relishing so many rasas in his heart. Krishna prema payoda reina rasadena tento sammohini. When he sees the waterfalls in the forest, water coming down the hills, then Krishna sees the perspiration running down the body of Radhika. And becomes overwhelmed in ecstasy. So all glories to this Vrindavan forest, Radheva Vrindavati. It is another form of Radhika herself. So when Krishna is wandering in the forest, he becomes lost in praying, remembering Radhika, and feeling separation. At that time, he plays his roots and begins to express the nectar in his heart. Who can describe the nectar of Krishna's food? Madhurima Basabhapi Matahansi Prajapa Pranaya Kusuma Bhaki Brinda Sangita Gosha Surata Samara Bhai Bhankriti Putanare Jayati Ridaya Dhansi Kopi Bhansi Ninara Oh, the sweet sound of Sri Krishna's flute. It is like the joyous warbling of intoxicated swans who have landed and are swimming in a lake of sweetness. The sound of Sri Krishna's flute is like the song of a bumblebee who is feeling so beautiful because he's landed in a, a garden of flowers made of pranai, intimate love. The sound of Krishna's flute is like the boom, 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 beating of kettle drums before a battle, announcing that now the battle of Cupid will begin. That sound of Krishna's flute is like a snake that bites the heart. Kopi Bangsi Binada. Huh, what is this sound? I don't know, I cannot describe because it's something amazing. When Sri Krishna plays his food like this, then Brajagopis, from wherever they are, in their homes, then they become maddened. One gopi was making a garland with a needle and thread. But when she heard the sound of Sri Krishna's food, immediately she just got up and ran into the forest with a needle and thread still in her hand. Another gopi was boiling milk and stirring with a spoon. She heard that sound of Krishna's food and forgetting herself, forgetting her past, present and future, forgetting her own name. She just ran into the forest with a spoon still in her hand. And the milk on the fire overflowed, boiled over. Another gopi was decorating her eyes with kajal. She had kajal only on one eye. And she ran into the forest. So wherever they were, in Braj, all oh, left everything and ran into the forest. And what was the condition of Shimati Radhika at that time? Hmm? Shimati Radhika from her childhood. Hmm? Her hmm, parents. And after when she was married, mother-in-law said, mother-in-law, Jutila's word, my daughter-in-law has some illness. Uh, Mukar, her grandmother also said, my daughter-in-law has some illness. She went and she complained to Purnavasi Devi. Oh, Purnavasi Devi, Holy Mother, please, tell me what's wrong with my daughter-in-law. 
when she sees a fresh rain cloud in the sky, she starts to tremble. And if she sees a peacock feather, she just begins to weep uncontrollably. Hmm? Asi Devi said, Oh, I know what this problem is, don't worry, I'll find a cure. How did Purnamasi Devi find a cure? Yoga Maya Mupashritaha, first verse of Rasalila. Yoga Maya Mupashritaha. This Rasalila is the cure for Radhika's Purnamasi's grandmother, Purnamasi's granddaughter, Nandi Muki, she asks, Oh my dear grandmother, what's wrong with Radhika? So Purnamasi can be open with her. She said, Bida, Bina, Makala, Kuta, Katata, Nirvasa. Garvasya Nirvasano Nisyandeyna Mudam Sudam Durimah Ankara Sankochana Prima Sundari Nanda Nanda Napro Jagati Asantre Gayan Tesputa Nasya Vakrama Drastaina Eva Vikrantaya Oh, this is love. And only a person who has, whose heart has become attacked by this love can understand what it's like. This love is like a mixture of nectar and poison. The happiness of this love defeats the pride of the nectar of heaven showering on one's head. But the pain that one feels simultaneously from the pangs of separation in this love is more painful and defeats the ego of the fresh Kalakut Bish, deadly, deadly poison. So Radhika is in this condition. So when she heard Sri Krishna's flute, at once she got up and she went to run. But when she was going to leave the house, she was not like other gopis. Other gopis, they came out from their house. But when Radhika was about to go, then Lalita jumped up and checked her. Wow! Lalita can tell Radhika, Oh! Have some self-respect. As soon as he plays the flute, why do you have to run there like all the others? Don't be like the crowd. Hmm? You wait. Keep your dignity. Make him sweat. Hmm? So Lalita is 27 days older than Radharani, so she's much more experienced in the world. In the spiritual world. <laughs> So she gives good advice to Radhika. Durtei Prajenda, this son of Nanda Maharaj is Durti, he's a rascal. If you play into his hands very easily, he may take advantage of you. So you have to be more, make yourself inaccessible to, for him, increase his eagerness and show your superiority over all the others who easily go into this trap. Hmm? Establish your uniqueness. So in this way, Lalita Saki, she is very good. Advice to Shinati Radhika. But the other gopis, they arrived there, and when they arrived there in the forest, they saw see Krishna, his beauty. And Krishna looked, and he was looking, 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 but he was looking for someone. But that someone was not there. And when see Krishna realizes that she's not there, then he doesn't want to begin to dance, he doesn't want to do Rasalila. He has to stall. He's trying to pass some time, waiting for Radhi to, to come. Krishna told Braj Gopis, Swagatamba Mahabhaga, Priyamkin Karvaliva. Why did you come here to the forest? You can tell me. Did you come to see the scenery? Anyway, you've seen it now, you should go home and serve your husbands. Because a chaste lady should follow Dharma if she wants to be happy in this life or the next life. So Krishna was speaking the Dharma Shiksha to them. But when Braj Gopis heard this Dharma Shiksha, their hearts were broken. Maivam vivoti bhuvan gaditam risamsam Sanchaja sarva vishayantava paramulam Bhakta bhajasya durvagra macha jasvam Duryo yatari purusho bhajate moksha Oh Krishna, how can you speak such heartbreaking words to us? We have given up everything. We've given up our husbands and all family members like vomit. <laughs> like bish, like poison. We have left them. Yet even you tell us we should follow Dharma, otherwise we go to hell. But even if someone would go to a million hells for a trillion years, how could they ever give up 
the aspiration to serve your lotus feet. So we have come here only for your happiness. Krishna, you should accept us. So see Krishna, he was he was looking around. And he said, knowing that Radhika was not there, he said, Oh Gopis, you are very dear to me and you have pure love for me. And you have all come to serve me. And I want to accept your service, but I'm telling you, without Radhika, I don't feel any happiness. You're all very intelligent. Please make a plan, somehow or other, that I can meet with Radhika. And when she comes, then we'll dance together. So then, they, um, the gopis amongst them, they chose one gopi to be a duty, to be a messenger. So then that messenger, she set off. And she went to the garden where Shimati Radhika was sitting with her sakis. That duty, that messenger, very humbly came into the garden and bowed down and took the dust from Radhika's lotus feet. That female messenger said, Oh, today my life is fortunate because I have touched your lotus feet. All the residents of Brajmangal, they are very pious. It is only because of their piety that you, it is possible that you have taken birth amongst us. You, please just cast your glance upon me. And if you will glance upon me for a moment, then I know that all the devatas, all the gods of the planets of the universe, they'll become subservient to me. That a fortunate person, you know, all the planets are serving him. So that means if you give me your creeper attacks, your merciful glance, then all the planets will become subservient to me. She said, Oh Radhika, I have a message for you. Please listen to my words. These words are very, very secret. There are thousands of beautiful young girls and they want to meet with a very beautiful charm complexion boy. One charm is but, though they tried to meet with him, they have all failed. Even Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune, has failed. All the beautiful ladies in the universe are attracted to him, they want to serve him. But he won't accept anyone. He's just become like a bumblebee, wandering here and there, searching for the fragrance of your lotus feet. So this boy, his name is Krishna. Krishna. I want to tell you, oh Radhika, please listen, some secret truths about Krishna, which is so confidential that even sages who are qualified to see the spiritual world, not one drop of this secret has ever entered into their ears. So then Radhani was very eager to listen. Yes, what do you have to say? She said, this boy, known as Krishna, is composed completely of Kama Rasa, the Rasa of amorous love. And because of this, he's always eager to enjoy loving pastimes. But when that desire is manifesting in his heart, he doesn't even go to Lakshmi Devi or anyone. He only goes, he's only attracted to the coward girls, the gopis of Vrindavan. So what does he do? He's wandering around Brajamanda and he's spying on gopis. Any gopi, whatever she, she, some gopis doing the housework, some gopis picking flowers, some gopis fetching water, and Krishna from a hiding place is watching. And he's looking at that gopi. And in his mind he's trying to dream up a very devious and aggressive plan to somehow or other capture that girl and travel with her across to the far reaches of the ocean of love. So sometimes, Krishna disguises himself as someone else and enters the house of that gopi and makes friends with her brother, with her husband, with her father-in-law, mother-in-law and gets the confidence of the whole family. And once he's got the confidence of the whole family and can come and go as he pleases, then he sneaks into the Antapur 
You know, in a Vedic house, there's a part in the middle of the house where only the ladies can go. And he sneaks there into the Antipur and catching that gopi alone and then takes off his disguise and reveals who he is and then enjoys with her. Sometimes Krishna, he might even disguise himself as that gopi's husband and goes into a house to meet with her. Sometimes Krishna, he may come up with a plan. He sees the gopis walking back to her home through the forest. So he takes his foot and he leaves his foot on the path when she's coming and then he hides. And she, when she's walking along, and she, oh, what's this? And she picks up Krishna's very beautiful flute and so many jewels, gold and jewels on his flute. And she picks it up. Oh, perhaps this belongs to Nanda Nanda. Suddenly Krishna jumps out from the bushes and says, you thief, you've stolen my flute. I'll report you. You will have to have a punishment. I'll give you a choice what punishment you want. And then Krishna will give her a choice between an exorbitant fine, which is unimaginably expensive and she cannot pay, or she'll have to do some community service to Krishna. Either pay the fine or pay Krishna in seva. So in this way, Krishna, he caught another victim. Krishna was wandering in the forest. He saw one gopi was picking flowers. Then he came and said, Oh, this is the garden of Cupid, of Kamadev. And he was stealing his flowers. I have been deputed by him to arrest anyone who will steal his flowers. And then he catches that girl. Sometimes Krishna, he goes to the house of a husband and invites a husband to play dice. Have a dice match. You know, once upon a time, Albert Einstein, he met with the Niels Bohr. You know, the quantum physicist. And they were discussing the quantum physics. How things seem to be happening by chance. The uncertainty principle. Albert Einstein didn't like it. Albert Einstein said, no, 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 I don't believe in this. Because God doesn't play dice. So Albert Einstein, he was wrong. Because all of our acharyas, they are shown. Krishna, he likes to play. Chow you know, He plays dice, plays Google gambling. Gambling games. So even Einstein cannot understand Krishna. Krishna's view is Achitya. So one, sometimes Krishna comes and he challenges one husband to a dice match and defeats him. And this way impresses that gopi and in this way slowly, slowly steals our heart. Sometimes when Braj gopis go to the Jamuna to take bath, they leave their cloth on the shore. This example is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna comes and steals their clothing and climbs the tree. And then tells him, oh, come out from the water. I'll, and I'll, otherwise, I won't return your clothing. So Shukriya Goswami gives a little hint in Srimad Bhagavatam of Krishna's tricky plans, his tricks and traps that he makes to capture Braj Gopis. He's giving one example. But Krishna has thousands and thousands of different ways of capturing Braj Gopis. Sometimes he disguises himself as a boatman. And when a gopi wants to cross the river and gets in his boat, then he gets halfway across and says, Oh, I'm feeling tired now, I have to rest. And the gopi sees that there's holes in the boat and it's filling up with water. So then she demands, No, once you, you should take me. And then Krishna takes off his disguise. I said, I'll take you across, but you have to pay a very high sum. Otherwise, you can pay in Seva also. So in this way, Krishna is. Hmm? So this gopi has come from Krishna in the forest to the garden of Radhika and is explaining to Radhika how Krishna is completely obsessed with enjoying loving pastimes and he's capturing different gopis. Sometimes Krishna disguises himself as a ferocious monster and when a gopi is wandering alone on a path in the forest, he jumps out. <laughs> And she screams, she's terrified, and she turns around and runs. Then Krishna quickly throws off the costume, runs around by another path, and appears there like a hero. Don't be afraid, damsel in distress. Follow me, I'll take you to safety. And then he leads that gopi to safety, to a cave. And then he gets into the cave, and Krishna says to her, It's very fortunate for you today that I just happened to be passing by. Because if I had been passing by at that exact moment, then who knows, 
perhaps she would not even be alive today. And then that gopi says, Oh Krishna, I'm so indebted to you, I don't know how I could ever repay you. Then Krishna smiles. So in this way, by tricks and traps, Krishna is catching all the gopis. So then, that messenger said to Shimati Radhika, even though there is not one chaste, respectable girl from a good family in the whole of Brajmando who has not been enjoyed by Krishna in his secret tryst here and there, but still, he is not satisfied. His heart is not satisfied. One day, Krishna was wandering in the forest and he was lamenting, why? Why is my heart not satisfied? Why am I not feeling pleased? Me feeling pleased. So then, Sri Krishna, he lay down beneath a Kadamba tree and he went to sleep. So this duty is telling Radharan. And when Krishna was asleep, in a dream, he saw a very beautiful golden gopi was approaching him. And she came to him very shyly with her head down and looking down and smiling and sometimes looking up. She said, Oh my Pranath, I only live to give happiness to you, but you never come to me. You are going to all these others. I am yours. Why don't you come to me? I am your Radha. And then she disappeared. And then Krishna in his dream, he fell to the ground, was crying. And suddenly, he woke up. And when Krishna woke up, he could not stop to sing, Radhe, 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 Radhe. Oh Radhika, now Krishna is just wandering in the forest, chanting Japa of your name. He takes his flute, and by his flute he's only calling you. But when he calls you, other gopis come running. But he doesn't even look at them. Chandrabhi has come, Bhattar has come, Shaibi has come. But they want to serve him, but he does not see them, he does not hear them. He does not think of anything except for you. He's just saying again and again, Kwasi Prayasi, Kwasi Prayasi. Kwasi Prayasi. Oh my beloved, where are you? My beloved, where are you? And tears are streaming from his eyes. And because, see, Krishna is weeping so much. And Krishna is the Pran, he's the Jivan, he's the life and soul of everyone in Vrindavan. The, the birds are crying in the trees. The deer are crying in the forest. The bumblebees are rolling on the ground and crying. Everyone is crying. Even Giraj Govardhan is melting. I think that very soon the whole of Braji will be drowned in tears of sorrow. If you don't go to him and save his life. So hearing this message at once. Oh Radhika, don't delay. Take my hand and come with me. I will lead you to Krishna. It was a good. This is a seva, you know. You have to learn how to be a duty. If you want to carry a message, you have to make a good case. Hmm? If some messenger is coming from Krishna and speaking to Radhika, or some messenger is coming from Radhika and speaking to Krishna, the messenger has to make a good case. And I think this was a very excellent case. So just as that messenger reached out her hand, hmm? Radhika was very much disturbed and she was choking, she was unable to speak and she was eager to go with that messenger and immediately meet with Krishna. But at once Lalita got up and stood between Radharani and the messenger. Hmm? Lalita Sari said, Hey Sundari, oh beautiful one, leave this place at once. Don't tell us anything about Krishna's qualities. We know very well what Krishna's qualities are like. Krishna, his, his heart is so crooked, he cannot even stand up straight, he stands in a crooked way. He's so crooked. So whatever you've told about Krishna's love for my Saki Radhika, then it cannot be true, it must all be lies. You see, 
If Krishna really considers that my Sakhi Radhika is the foremost among all the gopis of Braja, why doesn't he stay with her? Why is he always going to others? You see, if Krishna cannot surrender to the standard of exclusively loving, exclusively loving my Radhika and only my Radhika and not anyone else, then may he suffer in separation May he never meet with Radhika. And may my Sakhi always remain aloof and detached from him. Now, you, you are due to your messenger. So these words of mine, you should carry these words to Krishna. Because it's our policy. The leader Sakhi was looking at Radhika and looking at Vishaka and Chitra and Champaglata, all the Sakhis in the group. The leader Sakhi said, it is our policy of our group that we only associate with those pious persons who are capable of ananya, one point exclusive love of one person. <laughs> we never associate with any impious persons whose heart cannot be a cantic, one pointed in love. And we will never compromise the policy of our youth, our group. Hmm? Understand, if you want to be under guidance of Alita Saki, then you have to have this abhiman that this is the policy of our group and we don't compromise. So then, that messenger from the garden where Radhika was staying went back through the forest and delivered the message to Sri Krishna. Krishna was thinking, no? what will I do now? So then Krishna came up with a plan. Krishna decorated himself as a beautiful gopi, as a shama sakhi. A beautiful gopi with earrings and with sindoor in his hair, with a nose ring and chain, everything. Perfectly like a beautiful sham colored gopi. And Krishna himself went there to that garden. And as he entered into the garden, he was singing. Ramuni. Singing the glories of Radhika with his hair standing on end in ecstasy. He or she came and bowed down to Radhika. I said, oh, today my life has become fortunate. Because as I was going here and there in the service of Krishna, by chance, by luck, I have attained a chintamani, a pri priceless jewel, in the form of your darshan. Even Lakshmi Devi wants the service of your lotus feet. Even Krishna himself, he's begging to attain the good fortune of your dasis, your maidservants. So Krishna himself in disguise is revealing his own heart. Because Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, they every day they comb the hair of Radhika, they paint pictures in sandalwood paste on the body of Radhika, they decorate the feet of Radhika. Krishna's thinking, oh, these Manjaris are amazing. I wish I could serve Radhika like that. Hmm? So Krishna is indirectly revealing this now. But at that time no one knows. So then that beautiful Shamasaki said, I don't care about this Mohan Raj Krishna, this king of Jesus. And I'm not acting on his behalf at all. Because just by coming in your presence, just by bathing in the, in the waves of your beauty, it's made me forget everything. But still, despite all of these facts, nevertheless, I want to tell you some intriguing speech that I heard coming from the lips of Krishna. I saw that Krishna was sitting alone in the forest and he was talking to himself. And I got closer and I listened and I realized that he must have been talking to you. That in separation, tam tam morti pratitam lata dikvish shoes puranti. When Krishna is in separation, Krishna sees Radhika in all the trees and creepers of the forest. So Krishna was seeing you, and he was speaking very sweet words. He said, 
Oh, Samuki. Oh, girl with a beautiful face. It's just as it's the nature of water to be liquid. So similarly, it's your nature to have love for me. So how is it that now you've become absorbed in thinking of my faults and criticizing me? You see, you are thinking that I played my flute and called all the gopis and I want to dance with them. But actually, I called the branch gopis to come only to that they will enhance the rasa of my dancing with you. This is a fact. Radhika was thinking one day, what would it be like to dance with my Pran Priyatan Sri Krishna with all gopis of branch dancing around? And because of this Krishna, the desire came in his heart to perform Rasa Lila, to mm, fulfill the desire in the heart of Radhika. So Krishna said, so but this is no fault of mine that I called all the gopis to dance, so don't label me in this way. Oh my Pranishri, if you say, but Krishna, if you only were calling them because you wanted them to dance around me, then I have a question. Why do you enjoy amorous pastimes with these other gopis? So then Krishna said, Oh Radhika, I can explain everything. You see, because I'm always remembering you and chanting your name and thinking of you and seeing you everywhere, sometimes I, when I meet with a gopi, then by accident, I think it's you. And I'm enjoying pastimes with her. And then suddenly, after some time, I realize, what? This is not Radharani? And when I realize it's not you, then I immediately cast her aside and consider to be quite repulsive. Yes? Yes? So don't think I'm meeting with other gopis. It's just accident I mistake them for you. Then Radhika, Radhika in a sport, he said, I don't believe. Sometimes you spend a very long time in the kunj. Then Krishna said, well, sometimes it happens that four or five or ten gopis, they come and they surround me and they catch me by force and they drag me into a kunj to meet with their yudhashuri. And at that time, when I meet with her, it always happens that one of your manjuris comes and he's standing outside the kunj. And in a very bold voice, that manjuri announces, O oh, Shama Sundra, there is only one girl in this village who is suitable for you. <laughs> and when I hear these words, then I immediately give up all enjoyment. In this regard, I am very renounced. So Krishna, in the disguise of a gopi, is telling Radharani that she heard Krishna alone in the forest talking to, to you. So then she said, one day Krishna was lying down in the forest and he fell asleep and he saw you in a dream. And when you disappeared from that day, he was just chanting your name. And everywhere he wanders, he keeps bumping into gopis here and there and thinking, mistaking them for you. Krishna was sitting alone and he said, Oh Radhika, I am not playing my flute to call other gopis. In fact, I am not even playing the flute. I just breathe to my lips and the flute begins to sing by itself. And my flute is just singing all about your glories and qualities. And I'm just listening to it and thinking, what is this amazing song? That's why I can't stop playing the flute. Because my flute is only singing your glories and begging you to come and meet with me. Because my flute knows that I am burning in separation from you and you are burning in separation from me. And my flute wants to solve this problem. But then, what happens? When my flute singing spreads all over Braja, the other gopis hear that and they come running. This is not my fault. So, oh Radhika, even though your mind, your sulky mood is full of rasa, please give it up and accept me. You are very, very uh, compassionate and very kind and very forgiving. So you should forgive me don't become angry with me 
I think that your friends, your sakis, have spoken so many bad things about me. They put so many rumors in in your ears. So don't don't believe in these rumors. I'm actually free from any fault. I am a completely offenseless person. So if you will not come to meet me very soon, then I will need some inauspicious space in this forest. So when Krishna, in the disguise of that gopi, in, he was implying to Radhika that if you don't go and meet with Krishna now, he may give up his life. Then Radharani became, she, she was trembling very much. And Krishna, in the form of that Saki, you know, Krishna's very, he likes to give everyone a choice. Krishna likes to give everyone a choice. So then Krishna said, in the form of that Saki, look, if you want to go and meet with Krishna in the forest right now, then I cannot stop you. Just go and meet with him. But if you don't want to go, no problem. Just stay here with me. <laughs> Krishna always gives everyone a choice. So then Radharani was very impressed with that gopi. All the sack, even Lalita, hearing these words, Lalita became silent. She couldn't say anything. So then Radharani said, Oh beautiful, dark complexion Saki, where have you been all my life? I have never seen you before. You are so beautiful that when I see you, I feel like I want to love you, just like I love my Shamsunda. I think that today I have met with you, because I was meditating on my Shamsunda Krishna, and that's why today I got a friend who has complexion just like this. So I ask you, can you do one thing to give some soothe the pain I am feeling in my heart? If you could put on this crown, which is decorated and gave a crown of peacock feathers, and if you could play on this flute, just decorate yourself with peacock feathers and play on this flute, then my heart will feel some relief. Could you do that for me? You see, my feeling is this. Aslishyava padaratam pranashtumam Adarshanam mamahatam karotuva Yathatadava vidadatu lampato Matpranatastu saeva napara Who has said this? Well, this is the eighth verse of Shichastakam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said, these are Radharani's words. Radharani said, even if Krishna makes millions of offenses, he may embrace me and crush me in his embrace, or he may break my heart by neglecting me and not giving me his darshan. He may even enjoy with other gopis right in front of me. He's a debauchee, he's a lumpert, he can do what he wants. But still, Krishna is my prana, and there's no one else in my life, only Krishna. And when Radharani said this, she, she told that Saki, Oh Saki, please give me your embrace. And Radharani jumped on that Saki at once and in ecstatic love embraced her. And when Radharani embraced that Saki, then that Saki returned the embrace. And then that Saki began to kiss Radhika all over her face. And then that Saki began to kiss Radhika on the mouth. Then that Saki began to scratch Radhika with the fingernails. And then that Saki took off the disguise. And it was Krishna. Radharani said, Do it! You rascal! And then Radharani smiled. She said, Gyatam, Gyatam, Gyatam. I knew it was you. <laughs> I knew all the time. You see, Radharani has 22 Bhav Alankars. That means 22 ecstatic emotional ornaments. And one of them is called the Mugda. Mugda means that. Um, a person who is mugda is very naive, very innocent and very gullible. You can trick them. But Radharani has this ecstatic emotional ornament called mugda. That means that Krishna may be lying to her, Krishna may be tricking her, but she acts all innocent and gullible like she's being tricked. But actually she knows exactly what's going on. And then suddenly, gyatam, gyatam, I knew all the time. So then, Krishna was in such ecstasy to meet with Radhika. And Radhika was in so much bliss to meet with Krishna. 
and the sakis went out from the kunj and Radharani and Krishna they played there. Jai Jai Hi Pyaro Kore Soi Hi Mohi Pade Bhavi Mohi Chori Soi Soi Kare Pyaro Radhikuri is very contrary to Krishna. But when they meet together, in their loving pastimes, that time Radhika gives up her contrariness. And she is feeling, oh, whatever Krishna does, that gives joy to me. And whatever gives joy to me, what I'm feeling, him, how did miraculously Krishna does that? Because our hearts have become one. And they're playing. Yatabhaka, Swa, Pratibhimba, Vibrama, Chukadeva Swami said, just like a child, playing with his own reflection in the mirror. Now Radha Krishna, Really, they feel the pranay, the oneness with each other. And in their loving pastimes, they're like a child playing with his own reflection in the mirror. At that time, Lalita and Vishaka have to go far away. But Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, from the lattice windows of the Kunj, they can have the darshan of the sweet pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Sprishati Adima Kundo Radikam Tatsati Nam Bhavati Vapusi Kampa Sweda Roman Chabaspam Adarama Durava Mudasya Jetpi Bhati Sayatna Bhavati Bhatatadasam Matata Chitranita See, Prabodhananda Sadhati Thakur, he's saying, at that time, when Krishna touches Simati Radhika, though Krishna is touching Simati Radhika, but Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, they're the ones who are trembling, they're the ones whose hairs are standing on end, they're the ones from whose eyes tears are flowing. And when see Krishna taste the nectar of the lips of Radhika, then Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, they all become completely mad and faint and roll on the ground. So our Srila Rupa Goswami Pai, being empowered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has come in this world. Yankali Rupa, Sharidana, Dharata, Thanraja, Prema, Mahani, Dikuntrita, Kona, Kapata, Udkarata. Mahaprabhu has bought the treasure chest of the loving pastimes of Radha and Krishna, but it was locked. And the key he has kept with Srila Rupa Goswami Pai. So try to be. In Anugatya, under the guidance of Rupa Nuga Braj Rasik Vaishnava, a Vaishnava who is absorbed, immersed in the Vichadara, the current of the conception of Sri Rupa Goswami. Hearing and chanting and remembering in the Anugatya of such a Vaishnava, then that treasure chest of the loving pastimes of Radha Krishna will become open to us. Vishwamanu Rajkumari Juki Jai 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 Sri Radhe Shao Gaur Prema Hari 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 Prema Prabhu Ki Jai Now it's time for Arti Who is the Pujari? Who is going to blow the conch and offer the Arti? I can do the Arti Can you offer the Arti? Yes Yes, please come. Not the arti. And everyone, please come. Don't be far away. The temple room is here. And have Arti Darshan of Radha and Krishna. Hare Krishna. I want to invite everyone, please come in Kartik time to Brajananda Parikrama of our Chaitanya Academy in Anandham. Go to the Ashram, Srila Gurdes. Ashram on the Parikrama near Chaitanya Biha in Vrindavan. So you can, if you want to, attend this Prajmana Parakrama, then please give your email address to Ramanath Prabhu and we'll send you all the details of our Parakrama in Kartik time. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.